everybody, my name is Kersana and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I created this Polish pottery look. So we are going to create that look Stay tuned. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. All right, let's get creating. Okay, so before we start, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about this piece. The top right here is actually painted in the brand new silk mineral paint line. And then the bottom, the white, is also painted in that. Everything else I use is the Dixie Bell chalk mineral line. Now the white and the blue, so the top and the bottom, is only available in Australia and New Zealand for right now, but it is going to be expanding. Obviously everything that's going on in the world right now, it's a little bit crazy. And hopefully in a few months when people look back at this, they'll say, okay, that's all over, done and over with. But I'm going to tell you what I used. The equivalent to this color right here is Bunker Hill Blue in the chalk mineral line. And then the equivalent to the white right here is Fluff in the chalk mineral line. So all is not lost, you can still replicate this look with the colors on the chalk mineral line. So we are going to go over all the products that I'm gonna use and then we'll get started. For the flowers, I'm using Rusty Nail. And then for the grass and the greenery, I'm actually using two different colors. I will be using Evergreen and then I'm also using Palmetto. And then for the blue right here, I am actually using for the blue, the lighter blue, I'm using cobalt blue. And for the white on here, I am using fluff. So again, if you, and then also, and then for this little design right here, I am using, so for that little pattern below, I'm using the silk line and the colors nautical, which is the same one as the top. But again, in the chalk mineral line, you would just use Bunker Hill Blue. It's the same exact color. So again, the bottom is fluff or the equivalent to fluff in the silk line is Endless Shore. The top is nautical or Bunker Hill Blue. Either way, you're gonna get the same result. So hopefully in a few months when you're watching this, you'll actually be able to get the silk, but um, just kind of disclaimer, Australia is a smaller market and with COVID and everything going on, there are issues with supplies and freight and things like that. And so Dixie Bell is trying really hard to get the silk line out, but I promise it'll be worth the wait. So let's go over how I create these patterns to get a cool Polish pottery look. So this piece is inspired not, this isn't the exact color, or this isn't the exact piece, but this piece is inspired by Polish pottery. This is my friend's and this piece is my friend's and she collects Polish pottery. And I thought, we need to make it special. If this is something she's going to collect for the rest of her life and she's gonna have it, we need to make it special. And so that is what I'm doing. I'm making this hand painted Polish pottery. So let's get started. So as with this piece, just the same as any other piece, I cleaned it really well to prep it and then I did my base coats of the colors on there. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a pencil first to draw the first design and I'm gonna kind of look over here. So this is shorter because I did it on the front of the drawer, but I'm going to try to look over here on this side and make it so that it is the same length down. I am freehanding all this stuff and I've never said that I'm a fine artist. So people are either gonna like this or they're not gonna like it and that's fine. Um, but I'm gonna freehand everything because I just, I enjoy it better freehanding. Plus Polish pottery, a lot of it is hand painted. And so I wanted to give it a more authentic look by hand painting everything because Polish pottery is not perfect. It's not the same exact pattern. It's actually numbered and I'll show you. So this one is right here. Let's get it. So it's numbered and it, so each one is handmade. So that's what we're doing. We're emulating that on a piece of furniture. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, let's see. I'm going to kind of gauge this side and then I'm gonna show you how I draw this other one. Okay, so the other one, the little loop-de-loops, half circles, whatever. 
loop-de-loops, they go down to about here. So I'm gonna start over here. There's three of them on that side, and so I'm going to try to do three on this side. So I'm gonna go down. Okay, so they go down all the way to, oops, so they go down all the way to here. So the first one, there's like a loop and I go up and a loop and I go up and a loop and I go up and then I leave a space and then I do another loop and then I'll fill it in with paint and you'll see how I do it. So I want my very bottom to be right there. So I'm actually going to mark it. So I'm marking it right here and that is where my very bottom one's gonna be. So I'm gonna eye this. If you don't wanna eye it, you can measure it. I'm not going to. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm going to just kind of, go. there's one, there's two, and there is three, okay? So there's three a little bit closer. There's three. And then remember that other one goes all the way down here. So I'm actually going to go down to that, go up, down, up. And I'm doing this with a pencil so that I can fix it later and I can adjust it and if it needs to be wider. Like I can tell, I can pro I'm probably gonna have to fix this one, maybe make it just a little bit wider right there. And you can erase it. So maybe a little bit wider. We don't want them to be too off. And then this will be the very last one. So those are what we're doing and they will be ready to paint. Okay, so you also want to make a little line in between the two. So we've done this one, we did the big one, and then we wanna make a line in between those two So we're gonna paint this, these ones right here, cobalt blue. We're gonna paint the bottom ones cobalt blue. This is gonna stay white, and then we will, I will show you how to make the dots in the other line. And you can also use your eraser and erase the marks. On there. Take a wet, damp cloth also. You can take a damp cloth to it later once we paint it. So cobalt blue, cobalt blue, cobalt blue, Cobalt blue, cobalt blue, cobalt blue. Let's do it. Okay, so I've got my cobalt blue. I have an artist brush. This is just a Finnevere artist brush. I like it because it carries or it covers a larger area, but I can also control it. So I'll show you. If I want to go down like this, it works really well with going down. Here, I'll show you on this side. Got our cobalt blue, and you can see how I can control it and it makes that nice little round part. There's a space right here, so I've got to be careful. And this is probably going to take about, I'm going to go all the way across. Even though I made these lines, we're going to go all the way across because later we're going to go over those with white paint. But, um, you're probably gonna need about three coats of the cobalt with this. Okay, so again, we're only painting this. So we're going down, flipping it around, and going up into it. And that kind of allows us to have a nice that allows us to have a nice little round edge there. Let me just fill this in. Same thing down here. We don't have enough paint, so I start here and just kind of push it and flip it up. Get some more paint, push it, and flip it up. And there you go. Fill all this area in. 
And then we're gonna fill this area in also. Okay, so I'm gonna take this side of the artist brush. Again, you can use whatever artist brush you want. I'm gonna go up into the top. So the blue is going to be connected. So we're gonna go from the blue and go around. And I'm just gonna use the brush and pull it up like that. Same thing, start here, but then go down a little bit further to go down. Flip the brush around like this and flick it up. And then just kind of fill all that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other two. And then we're going to do a few coats. wait for the cobalt to dry, I want to show you how I did the stamp at the bottom. So you can see that the stamp is right here and I wanted it kind of a boho type look, not something super perfect. And so I'm using the IOD stamp by, it's called the IOD stamp called a Bohemia. So I'm pulling this part off. Okay. And so I'm taking the silk paint, and again, if you don't have the silk paint, then you can do the chalk mineral paint in Bunker Hill Blue. And I'm just gonna open it. And I'm almost going to, I'm not gonna saturate this with it, but I'm almost gonna do sort of like a dry brush over top of it. And that way I don't get too much, because if you put too much paint on it, it smears. So I'd rather it look almost like there's parts missing and distressed than it be smeared on there. So I'm just kind of putting it on here. And once you're done putting the paint on, you can go and just rinse this off with water. It's really easy. And do one little, one more little run through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it down at the bottom right here and push it up against the surface and I'm just going to push it with my hand. They also have a brayer that you can go over it with, some stamping blocks, things like that. I don't have either of those so I just do it this way. If you do have a stamping block, you can use that. If you have a brayer, you can use that. So I'm going to... Just put pressure everywhere and then I'm gonna go ahead and carefully peel it down. And that is how you do the stamp. Now if you get paint on here, you can either wipe it up because this is dry or just touch it up with the paint right there, no big deal. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Because this isn't as long, I'm gonna only put paint right here. And let's hope that we can control it. So I'm going to go ahead and just 
butt it right up against there. Stick it on. Kind of hold it right here so it doesn't touch that other part. And peel it back and boom, there you go. So if you get it on other stuff, like I said, wipe it off right away or you can just paint over it. So that is how you do the stamp. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next part. We'll be using fluff and we'll be making the dots. So I have a brush that has a long, long bristles on it. If you have one that's got shorter that it just would make good dots, then go for it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line in each one of these, okay? And what I mean by that is, do you see the line right here? So I'm gonna create those first before we do the dots. So I'm gonna start right here. Go down. And I'm gonna start over here and kind of work my way down, like that. And I'll go over that again. I'll trace over it again to make it darker. I'm gonna start right next to the other one and go down. And again, I'm just eyeballing this, so if it's not perfect, then it's not perfect. I'm gonna start down here and I'm just going to go there. So now I have a line that I know I have to just trace over and make darker. I'll start right next to the other one. Go down. Let's start this way. And there's this little lip right there. And there we go. So now we have those lines. I'm going to trace over those again to make them thicker and then we will do our dots. So I'll end up going back over that once it dries just to make it more solid white. But until then, we're going to do our dots. So I try to start up here. You can just go like this and do dots on the borders. And you're going to want to go all the way up like this. Okay, so you're gonna create a border with those. Go right next to it, do your dots. Don't worry about them being perfect. Go up. Go next to it. Okay, same thing with the bottom ones. You're gonna want to start down here. Just kind of mesh into that. Okay, same thing. Just go to the border. I'm gonna do the same thing on here, do a border, 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 and then randomly place the dots. Okay, 
so the next part is you see the greenery. We're going to create the greenery on here. And so I'm just going to take another artist brush and I'm using evergreen and I'm going to dip it in here. I'm going to go across. I'm going to stop about right here, but I'm going to go across just like that. Sorry, I'm gonna stop about right here and I'm gonna go across. And the reason why I'm stopping at each end is so that I can do a leaf at each end. So I'll show you. So I can start a leaf right here and it'll be right at the end. And then I can just go like half moon. Just be careful of that little divot, but half moon and that's how we're going to create this greenery and you can go back over this once this dries just to darken it up you could do the leaves so you can see that this I did the end so I'm gonna create a leaf right here right and these ones are going that way, so you can create some over here that are going this way, if you'd like. We're just doing little half moons. It's going up, you could create that one going this way. You could do some going straight up if you wanted to. Create some more coming from here, and you can overlap them. And we'll do, let's do one more right here. Okay, so that greenery is done and I'll go back later and darken that. The next thing to do is make the vines or what have you that are gonna go through the flowers. So you can see them right here. And so, oops. so you can see them right here. So I'm going to create them. It's super easy. I'm gonna take the side I'm gonna use this part right here. I'm gonna dip it in the paint and I'm just gonna start here and I'm just gonna wisp it up, okay? Just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna wisp it down and have it touch that one. I'm gonna go up here, wisp it up, wisp it down, grab one right here, grab another one from there, have one that goes up like this, maybe one that goes like this. You can overlap them, don't worry. You can start from, so if you want to make them go up here, you can start up here and kind of pull it down to that one. Let me show you. So you can kind of start up here, let's say, um, like start here and have it come down to that one. And I'm going to have some go right here. This is just kind of like a filler greenery, so that way the piece doesn't look so naked, I guess is the word for it. And so that is what we're gonna do. And then later on, after we're done making the flowers, we're going to go in it with palmetto as well. So that is how we do it with evergreen. And then we're gonna let that dry and then we're going to build our flowers. Flower, the flowers that I'm gonna be creating are tulip-esque and I'm gonna be using rusty nail. So I have an angled artist brush and there's two different flowers that we're doing. So we're doing these ones. So we're doing these ones and then we're doing these ones, okay? And so I'm just gonna dip it in and I'm just gonna randomly put them. If you can find them right here to be like the end of a stem, you then it's then put it there. But if for some reason it doesn't look good and you need to put someone something up, some, if you need to put one somewhere else where it doesn't have a stem, we can build that stem later. So let's start here and I'm just going to turn it out and go like this into almost a cup, pull it up and then make it go out like that. That's what you want. And then I'm going to go to this and it's gonna be at like a little point and I'm just gonna go down. So these are like tulips. Go down, make a triangle and then I'm just going to fill that in. And of course you're gonna to wanna to go over this again just to darken it. 
And then I'm gonna take the little corner right here and I'm going to build almost like a little teardrop right here. If it doesn't look perfect, no big deal. But they almost have like a teardrop look or a circle. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the other one. So this, these ones are generally bigger than we'll do a smaller one. So I'm gonna do it right here like this. Think of like a little cup, like a little half moon or horseshoe or something like that. And we're just gonna do little triangles, X that over and boom. And then we're just gonna make our little teardrop And there you go. So now what you need to do is you need to step back and see where you wanna place them and just kind of create these all over the side. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how to do the stems on something that you placed. Okay, so this is the last part of your Polish pottery. So I have Palmetto and some of these I created, like this one I created without a stem. And so we're going to first of all build the stem off of the ones that we created. So we're just gonna take the palmetto and kind of wisp it down just like we did the other stuff. This one, wisp it down. Let's just wisp this one down too. Any of them that you created that maybe don't have a stem, which I don't think any of the other ones do. So I'm gonna add some palmetto and just kind of wisp that up too just to add a little bit of dimension onto this piece, a little bit of color. And Polish pottery has a lot of greenery on it. And so we're doing palmetto and I've done that. And now I'm going to make little greenery bushes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up like this and I'm just going to make the little bushes right there. Almost like they're rosemary or something. do it off of that. You can put it on top of there and build it off of that. Build one more. And there you go. So I am going to seal this piece with some satin clear coat, but first I'm going to distress it. So I'm going to distress it and then I'm going to seal it with satin clear coat. And I'm also going to paint this bottom lip right here in Bunker Hill blue. So I'm going to paint the bottom lip in Bunker Hill blue distress it and then seal it in satin clear coat. Okay, everybody. So as you can see, this piece is done and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is one of my favorite creations that I did. I'm not the best fine artist, but I think it worked out pretty well. So if you guys are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Also everything I use or the equivalent because the silk line is not available all over right now will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys so much for joining me and happy creating.